Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to walk through uh, our updated numbers uh, in a minute, and there is uh, reason to, to be cautiously optimistic. Uh, we've certainly uh, seen a, a momentary uh, decline in the number of cases. Uh, we obviously want to see a longer trend over a longer period of time, uh, and then we remain somewhat concerned with the prevalence of, of the new strains that, that we believe are more contagious. Um, but it certainly appears that, that things are, are headed uh, in a better direction than where we've been in terms of case count. Um, of course, any significant impact on hospitalizations, if we do in fact see a sustained decline in cases, there will be a lag or delay uh, of 21 to 24 days before we're likely to see a corresponding decline in hospitalizations. And we continue to really implore the public to please follow the public health orders. Uh, we know that they will work in slowing uh, the transmission of COVID-19. And if you look at, at where we were with case counts in the hundreds, we still have quite a ways to go, uh, but we do appreciate uh, the actions of San Diegans to, uh, to take action to help us uh, try and get through this as it relates to cases. Uh, we also know that there's considerable interest in, 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 in many regards, uh, very good news surrounding vaccine distribution. Uh, our healthcare systems are administering vaccines. Uh, our county uh, sites, uh, which we are adding to uh, on a regular basis, uh, are seeing considerable demand uh, for vaccines as well. Uh, I'll share with you an update of all of the locations that we have, but today, uh, Supervisor Vargas, Mayor Salas, uh, Sharp Healthcare, and the county uh, opened our second super, super station event uh, in Chula Vista, uh, at the Sears building in Chula Vista. Uh, this adds to the site that has been underway at Petco um, for a little bit, and so those are two super stations that are now open. Uh, we also have plans by February 1st to open a super station in East County and North County. Uh, we also presently have eight smaller pods, points of distribution that are administering vaccines daily. And we have plans again to double this number uh, again by February 1st to ensure uh, the maximum convenience and, and locations for people uh, to be able to, uh, to receive vaccines. And as we add these, uh, the appointments will be available uh, via our website uh, where people can go on and click and see what's available. We know that there's tremendous demand for appointments and often as soon as they're made available, uh, they are quickly gone. And in some regard, that is encouraging because there is such significant demand to get vaccines. Uh, but we have to continue to work through the process of receiving vaccines uh, and then simultaneously standing up the infrastructure to be able to administer them. And again, what the county is doing is, is just additive uh, or on top of what our healthcare partners are doing daily, uh, what the VA is doing, what DOD is doing, what the pharmacies are doing. Uh, so it is a, a multi-prong and, uh, and multifaceted um, approach to doing that. Um, we have in the last 48 hours been shipped uh, 173,000 uh, vaccines. Uh, again, a small portion of those are for uh, the county government to use uh, at our pods and super stations, uh, and the rest are distributed throughout the system for individuals doing it. And so that is encouraging. That is a significant uh, shipment that is just arriving uh, now as we speak and we are building out the infrastructure to be able to do it. And then there's considerable uncertainty about uh, how many you will get or when you will get them. And so we continue to try and build out the infrastructure uh, to accommodate uh, for that uncertainty, and uh, we will continue to work through that. And we appreciate the, the community's patience uh, as we build this up. Uh, we know in, in some cases there are instances of traffic and, and backups and people having difficulty getting appointments because they aren't available. But again, this in large part is a testament to the demand uh, for the vaccine and we will continue to work every day to make the system more seamless uh, and easier to move. Uh, we also appreciate the federal government uh, increased focus uh, and effort around uh, vaccine distribution and rollout and COVID response in general. Uh, and we think that this will, uh, will help us as we move forward. We know and recognize that vaccines represent our way out of this. Uh, vaccines alone will not get us there. We have to continue to follow the public health orders to slow the spread, uh, but we are working aggressively in our county to make as many locations available as possible uh, to build out the infrastructure to make it easy to get into that system uh, and to continue to do everything we possibly can uh, to get the maximum number of San Diego's vac vaccinated as quickly um, as possible. And as it stands right now, uh, healthcare systems uh, or individuals who have vaccines concurrent with state guidance are, are able to, to vaccinate healthcare workers and healthcare systems or others who have vaccines are eligible to vaccinate those 65 and older uh, if they have the available supply. Um, our county system of pods and superstations will continue 
to focus on vaccinating healthcare workers, and we have opened up those appointments to those 75 and older. Uh, when we get through those and we start to see some slack in appointments, as Dr. Wooten has stated, uh, when we get to that point, then we can expand that uh, to 65 and older, but we're not there yet. And so right now, the appointment-based system is available for healthcare workers uh, and those 75 years and older. We do ask San Diegans to not go to a vaccine, dis vaccine distribution site if you do not have an appointment. Uh, it is not a walk up or show up absent an appointment. And so part of the traffic concern in, in, in that we're facing is individuals who are showing up uh, just hoping to get a vaccine. Uh, we need to hold true to the appointment system. It helps us ensure efficiency and helps us move people through. We also ask individuals do not make an appointment if you are not a healthcare worker or 75 years or older, uh, because by the time you get to registration and you don't meet those criteria, uh, you will be turned away because we wanna follow the tiered system uh, as we work uh, through each and every one of these steps. And again, we ask for the public's continued patience and help as we work through this. One thing that we will be adding tomorrow uh, for seniors 75 and older only who do not have computer access to make an appointment uh, via the website is starting tomorrow. Uh, they will be able to call 211. Again, this is only for seniors 75 and older uh, who do not have access to a computer or someone to help them navigate through the online system. Uh, someone will be there to help connect them to their health system partner. Uh, we continue to ask all San Diegans, see if your health care provider has them first. If they do not, then utilize the appointment systems of the county. Uh, but starting tomorrow, seniors will be able to call 211. And again, please be patient because we expect there will be significant demand on this phone line and there are a limited number of appointments. And so we ask for everyone's patience. 211 has been a wonderful partner and they are working to uh, ramp up their ability to access calls. Uh, and so again, we ask for everyone's patience and please do not call 211 about vaccines unless you are 75 years or older uh, and you do not have access uh, to a computer system. Last week, we shared with you our overall approach and, uh, and, and where we wanted to, uh, to get to as a region. Uh, our approach remains true. We wanna have four super stations uh, along with uh, approximately 16 pods. Uh, we wanna have them set up by February 1st. And our goal is to have the capacity as a county entity uh, at county sponsored pods in partnership with others to be able to do 25,000 vaccines per day uh, every single day and we continue to build uh, towards that very ambitious goal and we will share with you progress um, as we go. The other thing that I will share with you in a minute is our, our uh, dashboard, uh, which we share the top line numbers, but our, our dashboard uh, is now uh, on the website and is accessible. It will show you the total dosages shipped, uh, how many have been administered. We also have a breakdown of those who have received vaccines uh, by gender, uh, by race and ethnicity, along with geography. Uh, two important, very, very, very important caveats is dosages shipped uh, just means that's what has been sent within our region. Uh, so we just, as I mentioned, received 173,000 vaccines shipped within the last 48 hours. Uh, that will show on there. Um, and on the administered dosages, those are just as been recorded in San Diego Immunization Registry. There is a considerable lag between people putting a shot in an arm and catching up the paperwork. And we certainly don't want paperwork to slow down the administration of vaccines. Uh, but Dr. Wooten is working with our providers that are lagging a little bit uh, on getting that data updated. And so we know the number of doses administered is considerably higher uh, than what's showing uh, on the dashboard. But again, we will work to continue to do that. But our focus and our priority remains uh, on as quickly as we possibly can uh, getting vaccines uh, in the arms of the appropriate populations at the appropriate time. And uh, we, that portal is updated and, uh, and again, uh, will be shared in, uh, in, in, in real time and be updated uh, in real time throughout the duration um, of what we face. So again, considerable energy and focus, uh, tremendous public demand. Uh, county continues to stand up more sites, work on streamlining registration sites and process of getting in. And we continue to do all this uh, under great uncertainty uh, about how many vaccines we will get uh, or when we will get them. Uh, but we are uh, trying to put in place the, the foundational parts we need uh, to get our region through this and uh, administer as many vaccines as we can as quickly as possible. With that, let's jump into our charts. What you'll see here is first on vaccination locations. These are the current locations uh, where we have county 
uh, sponsored pods or super stations. Again, many of these in partnership with others. Uh, you know, you see there at the top the Petco Park Superstation, uh, the new uh, Sharp South Bay Superstation at the bottom there in Chula Vista, and then in between those, a variety of sites spread throughout the county where individuals can go. If you go to vaccinationsuperstationsd.com, uh, you will see this listing. You can click on each location uh, and see if there is appointments available. Again, we have a fraction of the vaccines needed for the entire county, and there is considerable demand. And so we ask for people's patience as the vaccine uh, appointments fill up very quickly. And as we get uh, more vaccines, again, we will continue to expand the options uh, for people to do this. And uh, we hope in the coming days to have the state portal or interface system. We're one of the pilot counties along with LA County uh, that we, we hope to launch that very, very soon uh, to have a more seamless and more integrated approach towards making these reservations. Um, on the next slide here, what you'll see is a map uh, in green, the two stars represent the two sta super stations that we have open right now at Petco and then in Chula Vista. You see one coming in the East County and North County. Our goal is to have those up and running uh, by February 1st. Uh, the green triangles represent other uh, county and partner pods, points of distributions, uh, the ones that are on here in green. Again, you can access an appointment if available uh, via the same website. And then the yellow triangles represent pods that are presently uh, being stood up that we are working to get up and running uh, in the coming days. And again, the goal is to have all of these um, up and running by February 1st. Again, that is contingent upon a steady uh, supply of, of vaccines. And this is, again, additive to what our healthcare system partners are doing, VA, DOD, and pharmacies um, are all doing as well. Next chart, you will see the dashboard, which is available on our county COVID website. Um, and this shows a breakdown. The dosage is shipped, again, 4, uh, 442,000 dosages shipped. But again, a very important caveat that 173,000 of these um, have just been shipped within the last 48 hours. Uh, and so we saw a big bump in that number today. Uh, obviously, those have to be received, uh, distributed, and then, and then put into the, uh, to the process for administration. Uh, administered doses, 181,738. And again, there is a lag on this. We know that the actual number of administered dosages is much higher. Uh, people have to catch up the paperwork and, and get those all administered in. And we're working uh, with entities to try and help speed up that process uh, so that we have more real-time updates. And then below that, you see the number of uh, individuals uh, vaccinated for their first shot, fully vaccinated there at 29,158. Uh, represents those individuals who received a second shot, uh, and we have 1% of our population, 16 and older, uh, who are now fully vaccinated, and again, we will continue to update this. You also see the, uh, the breakdown on here by gender. Uh, obviously, the, the bulk of these uh, vaccines that have been administered are to healthcare workers, and so your, your breakdown, both race and ethnicity, uh, gender and geography, uh, will in large part track the healthcare workforce of, of San Diego County, which is the overwhelming majority um, of these. And so we will continue to drive with an equity focus to make sure the communities impacted uh, receive it most, but we have to do that consistent with the tiering system that is laid out. And again, this dashboard is on our website and will be updated in real time, not weekly. We will update it daily uh, as we get new information and new data uh, and folks can access it as we move forward. Let's get quickly into our, our cases. Uh, what you will see today, we're reporting 1,176. Again, uh, and Drs. Wooten and McDonald can, can speak to this in greater detail. There is uh, reason to be somewhat optimistic, but again, um, we want to see continued trends over time uh, you know, before we really uh, are confident we're going in the right direction. And we don't in any way uh, want any even modest decline in cases to have us lose our focus or adherence to the public health orders because as quickly as numbers could trend one direction, they can rapidly turn around and trend another direction, particularly with the more contagious strain of, of COVID-19 now present in San Diego County. Um, hospitalizations, again, you see a slight uptick there in, in COVID-related ICUs, uh, a slight downtick in total COVID-related uh, hospitalizations. Uh, and even if we do see a decline in cases, again, because of the lag in hospitalizations, uh, it could be a little bit before we see uh, any significant relief on our hospital system. Uh, next one, you will see uh, the COVID uh, ICU and non-COVID ICU uh, system capacity. Again, the uh, COVID-related ICU census popping up uh, to 438. Uh, this is a, a high out of, out, of, uh, out of what we're seeing. 
uh, non-COVID ICU holding steady right there at 241. And then 46 being the number of staffed and immediately available ICU beds, including pediatric beds. Uh, the last chart I have is our COVID-related deaths, uh, 48 new deaths uh, today, loss of life, 65 yesterday, that was an all-time high. Uh, and again, the loss of life will often lag uh, an increase in hospitalization, which will lag uh, the number of cases. And so we continue to work very hard to both simultaneously respond to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and spread and build out the uh, infrastructure needed to administer vaccines. And we certainly hope that a steady supply of vaccines uh, will be coming and hopefully coming on a regular basis so we can better meet the, uh, the need and the demands of, of San Diegans. Uh, we'll hear briefly from uh, Supervisor uh, Nora Vargas, and then we will take your questions. Doctors McDonald and Wooten are here and available uh, for questions uh, from all of you. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Supervisor Vargas.